I have a secret, a confession. I'm not actually as brilliant, original, creative, witty, charming as you might think I am when it comes to talking to girls. So you look like super sweet and innocent, and then you look absolutely like trouble the next second. This is exactly like the most perfect ever. I have like a love-hate relationship with Brazilian. Half the, half the time, half the time when I meet a Brazilian, I love her. Half the time when I meet a Brazilian, I'm like, she's fucking crazy. Okay, so that's kind of a lie. I am a little bit witty and charming. However, creative and original, not so much. And in fact, being uncreative and unoriginal makes my game phenomenally easier. And ironically, it actually makes me more witty and charming. I love your expressions, by the way. I love your expressions. Because you have such an innocent face, but then when you smile, you seem like a total troublemaker. Really. A little bit. A little bit. Have you ever looked at a girl, wanted to open, not known what to say, and then not even gone? Have you ever had a girl give you a shit test and you just freeze and have no answer whatsoever? Have you ever had a set that's going so well and you just don't know how to go for the kiss or how to take the girl home? Well, being unoriginal and uncreative can actually help you with all of these problems and many more. And not only can it make game easier to do, it can make game much easier to learn as well. So how do you stop stumbling awkwardly? How do you have something to say how do you make game easy? Well, to kind of sum this up, I'm gonna give you a quote about creative writing that really illustrates the point. And the quote goes something like this. Great writing is easy. All you have to do is read great writing, remember it, and forget where you remember it from. Same is true in game. Excellent game is easy. All you need to do is find good game, remember it, copy it, forget where you remember it from, and make it your own. That's what I've done. I have had mentors, I've studied on the internet, and I've also been out in the field day after day, night after night, for years upon years, coming up with what works, what doesn't, and compiling my own archive, my own arsenal, if you will, of the things that work, right? To have seen a shit test before, know how to pass it, and not have to think that is useful. Or when you walk up to a girl and you don't know exactly what to say on the opener, and you can you know, go into your memory bank and come out with something, that is absolutely useful. But most of the time, I don't even use lines that I've used before or lines I got from other people. What I actually do is I use formats that make game much easier for me. So for example, instead of taking a stock push-pull line that someone said 10 years ago, I have a format, a way of creating a push-pull on the spot, and I will just do that in game. Or instead of taking an opener someone said, you know, five years ago that I'm like, oh, that was brilliant then, but has nothing to do with the girl that I'm actually talking to, I'll observe the girl and I have a structure, a format that makes it easy, just plug and play, to have a good opener that's actually congruent to the situation, congruent to the girl, and cannot possibly have been stolen or borrowed from someone because it's relevant and unique to the situation. So here's kind of what good verbal game is like once you actually master it. It's not like, let me use this can line and this can neg and this can tease and this story from 10 years ago and this made up thing that never happened to me. It's not like that at all. It's more like this. You're having an excellent conversation with a girl that you're truly enjoying and you're truly engaged in. And as you're having that conversation, maybe you notice the girl's getting a little bit bored and you know in that moment a format you can use almost without thinking to get the girl's attention back, get her engaged again, and then you can continue having that great conversation with her that's wonderful for you and wonderful for her. Oftentimes with boot camp students, I will do sample approaches on them. I'll say, you guys play the role of the girls, you can be nice, be mean, whatever, I don't care. And I'll approach them and, and they can throw whatever at me and, and I'll, I'll game them. Um, but one thing I've started doing recently is I actually do the game without actual lines in the game. What I'll do is instead of saying the line, I'll say the format. So instead of saying like, you and I wouldn't get along, I'd say like dismissive tease. Or instead of saying like, wow, you know what, you're actually not so bad, I'd say like um, tentative, tentative qualifier with a push pull, right? And funny enough, that's how I actually think about game. I'm not actually thinking about the lines anymore because the lines have become second nature, either because I have them stored up in the memory bank or because I have formats to create the lines. So I'm freed up to think about where am I at, what does the set need, and then how do I do it? And most guys are so stuck on the how do I do it, i.e. what do I say, that they can't be present in the moment, they can't focus on giving the interaction what it needs, and they stumble and falter. But by taking away that third part, the what do I actually say part, right, which is actually the hardest part for most people, you make game phenomenally, phenomenally easier. You are so tiny. And you, are, you are the like... Actually, you're not that bad. I thought you were writing deals in your intro, so I thought you were asking like this song. I'm just saying. I'm showing up. Showing up for what? Whenever I'm here. I know what.
You're durable. I will protect you. At least for the next like 10 seconds. What's your name? My name is Todd. I know, isn't it? 90% of the interaction, held 99% of the interaction, is you having fun, being yourself, being genuine. And in fact, knowing you have these things actually gives you the freedom to be more genuine because you're not sitting there worrying, what do I say next? What do I say next? Where's this going? How's it gonna work? Instead, you're actually sitting there, enjoying the conversation, paying attention to the girl. And in fact, the best use of these formats is when you take what the girl's giving you, you listen to the girl, and then use these formats. So in a sense, it actually, strangely enough, makes you more genuine than if you didn't have them. So why do I focus so heavily on verbal game? See, there's a lot of aspects of game I could focus on, right? Inner game versus outer game. I could pick either one, right? Or in terms of escalation, you can escalate verbally, you can escalate physically, you can escalate logistically. Why do I focus on the verbal? Well, the answer is that I find it to be the most universal in all of game, and I find it to be kind of a keystone that actually creates all of the rest for you. Yeah, you can work on inner game all day long, but if you get the outer game right, you get the actions right, you start living those things, and the inner game tends to come along with it. And it actually come, tends to come along more genuinely because it's coming along with positive responses from the girl and the world and actual validation and feedback of you becoming that guy with a great inner game. And by all means, work on your inner game also, by all means but key off of your actions because your actions are in your direct control. So even if you're feeling nervous inside, if you're able to act the right way externally, the results will come. And with enough practice, that nervousness will tend to go away as well. So verbal game is actually kind of like the keystone habit. If you get the word part right, everything seems to flow from it. Also, specifically when it comes to escalation, because in game you do have to escalate. You're escalating from strangers to sex or relationship, right? You, there is an escalation there. Verbal game is the safest escalation by far. Physical escalation can have some strong objections and can even be considered wrong or creepy or whatever, right? Logistical escalation, same thing. It can be forceful or try hard or different things like that. Verbal escalation is very, very safe because words are not considered to be as big of a deal as physical actions are, and also because words are, can be kind of divided up so finely. You can make the verbal escalations so tiny as to be almost imperceptible, and therefore as you're escalating, it's almost no risk. And so it is by far the safest and most adaptable form of escalation to choose to key everything else off of. I said I'm gonna be a little forward because I find you engaging and amusing. Like this is one of the most random yet fun conversation I've had in quite a while. Um, I would love to hang out a bit further somewhere. Don't really care where. Okay. If you want to go bake and hang out, if, well that's cool, that'd be amazing. I would love to learn. But I could also, we could also just go somewhere, chill and, and whatever. I don't really care. But um, yeah. So here's what I want you to do. It's a quick homework assignment, but it's very fun and useful. Think about a typical interaction you have with a girl and think about the places where you often struggle, the points of friction, whether it's maybe how to escalate to a kiss or how to take a girl home or how to make it man to woman, something like that. What I want you to do is pick maybe three of those points in your interaction where you struggle. And I want you to come up with three lines, quote unquote, for that point. And here's what I mean. I want you to come up with one line that is something you borrowed, that you saw somebody else do, you heard me do, you've seen done before that you think would fit in that circumstance. And now you have one thing in your cans war chest to bring out when you need it. Second one I want you to do is one you make up yourself. Think about what you think might work, what makes sense to you, run it through in your head and be like, yeah, I think I like that one. That one is truly uniquely your personality and it probably will work as well. And then third, and this is very, very important for verbal game, I want you to think about a format you could use that would work there. So for example, you could use a push-pull in that spot anytime. Or you could use, maybe it's for passing a shit test, you could use if by X you mean Y. If by that word you mean this word, then blah, 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 blah. So think of a format that would work there. And now you have not just one solution, not just two solutions, but with the format, an infinite number of solutions to that place where you're currently struggling. And next time you're in field, you may not remember it perfectly, but having, having practiced it, you will have it more on the tip of your tongue, more on your mind than you did before. And with 
some repetitions and practice, you're gonna become second nature with this and those problems, those sticking points, those frictional points in the set are gonna become not only easy for you, but maybe even the best parts of your set because they're the parts you're most prepared for. So I want you to do that with three parts of your game that you are currently struggling with. I promise if you do this, it's gonna make a tremendous difference in your results. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you actually use this in your own game. In fact, if you do, feel free to post below your sticking points and the lines and formats you come up with. I'd be very curious to see them. And if you like this sort of discussion of verbal game and these sort of practical tips that are gonna help you immediately in your own game, you might wanna check out a little program I have called Verbal Game Academy. It's at verbalgameacademy.com and it goes far, far deeper on all these concepts and a ton more that I can't even begin to address on YouTube for various reasons. So check that out. And by the way, I do have a pretty crazy pre-sale promotion on that page, so you definitely wanna go over there soon. Thanks for watching. See you there and see you on the next video.